<sighs> Welcome in there to the latest edition of Extra Time. Uh, when your uh, pack, IFB pack, came off. Yes. And you, we were, and Shaq and I were analysing the top ten goals. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we were so involved in it, weren't yes, we? That's, yes, yeah. that we were. You look like, you look like, it's not going to work. There you go. Come on. Yeah, we got the questions. <laughs> like, what do I look like, Craig? Uh, you look like you didn't have a care in the world. What do you mean? Well, you were sort of going like that. Uh, yeah, well, let's look, look, let's, let's face it. it, the production standards of this show. <laughs> yeah, so what you're saying, you couldn't get away with anything. <laughs> uh, how are you, Mario? How's life? Oh, God. I'm very good, man. I'm listening to you guys. Just, oh, man, you just funny, you guys. I love that's it. A lovely, <laughs> that's a lovely apartment you've got. It's, it's very nice, isn't it? Ah, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Taking care of stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's those Chelsea millions. Uh, is it time for Newcastle to get a next-level manager, Shaq? <laughs> Ooh, you're, the, you're the mayor of Newcastle. Uh, it, it's... Be careful, it's, you'll be in the paper. Yeah, no, it's... Listen, I've... I've Loved everything that Eddie Howe has done. I think he still deserves to another shot at next season. But um, next... this is not the most convincing. Yeah, presentation. Ne next season has to start really, really well. Who, who would you have come in? I didn't say I would have Eddie Howe mm -hmm. start. That's what but I said. But say he just starts badly, who would? Uh, well, then we, we, be your we have that conversation is starting. Well, we'll throw some names in there. No, no, you can't no, no, I've, no, not now. I've just seen. Uh, the Dan Bunshaw. Mario, start, yeah, bench, or drop. Start. These yeah. three strikers: Patrick Cliver, Robert Van Persie, Rude Van Nistelrooy. What are we doing? What? It's for oh, oh no! I, I, I will start Cliver because playing with Cliver when I came in the first team at Ajax was just incredible. I was just shocked, you know, like to have a player around me that oh. was that good. I was like, wow. So as a young boy, I go for Cliver. Then. Yeah. Um, Bench, oh my God, Nistroy from Percy. Okay, I will, um, I will have to drop from Percy and I will bench from Nistroy. What's he doing? God, he's doing with a child today. I'm watching the Chelsea game. <laughs> when, when playing All right. in a high intensity match like <laughs> Liverpool against Manchester City yesterday, how difficult is it not to be caught up in the emotions and make a terrible tackle or make a silly mistake? When you're in like those, those old firm games, say old sick Rangers, you, you've got tens of thousands of fans, all the eyes are on you players. How do you stop yourself from making a mistake? How, what do you mean making a mistake? Like, how conscious are you of these big games that are so important? That Do you over, do you think about yeah, mm. I think more? I think when you get in a scenario where if you start worrying too much about making a mistake rather than what, how you can affect the game in the other way, right? It's, it's, a, it's one of the reasons yeah. why yeah. a lot of clubs and players now employ uh, player psychologists. We, you know, we had them, the odd one back in the day, but we all sort of poo-pooed it. You know, the psychologist said... What, what a surprise. <laughs> well, you know, you did what you did back then, Shaq, didn't yeah. you? You, you, you didn't. You know, you went, oh, the psychologist is in. Right. <laughs> send somebody in, send some mug. But, you know, they have been, <laughs> a lot of the clubs employ them now because the pressure is on players, so you start thinking about, you know, I, I, I prefer to phrase it one way, you think about how I'm going to affect the game in a positive manner. Because if you start worrying about making mistakes and what might happen, you're, all, you're already going onto the field on the back foot. OK. So, I, you know, it's, it's very difficult. And is that something you are conscious of? Do you know, it depends how you're playing at the time. It's, it's like everything else, when we talk about players, these days that are getting paid whatever they're getting paid. It makes no difference if you're either playing well or you're not. And if you're a player who's going through a bad period, mm. then you're you're more conscious of that when a big game comes up. If you're a player that's, if you're a striker, for example, that's, that's scored, you know, seven and seven or 10 and 10, or you're a midfielder that's scoring goals and you're playing well, you just, you're not even thinking about it. But if you're coming off a bad couple of games, take an example, Newcastle were on today, Kieran Trippi. Mm. Kieran Trippi, you could have went through months and months and barely found a mistake. And then all of a sudden he has how many? Two or three, maybe Big more? Ones. Yeah. I'm Big sure. ones all in the space of yeah. three or four mm -hmm. weeks. That's no coincidence. Yeah. That's confidence. Right. So it doesn't matter who you are, when the confidence takes a dip, that's when mistakes can happen. I, 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 as a goalkeeper, <laughs> yeah. mistakes. I, I, as a goalkeeper, mm -hmm. as, as a goalkeeper I, it, it's worse because 
more times than not, you, you're judged by your mistakes. And you know that if I do make a mistake, it, 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 it's defining, in, in, in all honesty. But I, I think, Shinny, in, in, in this context of, of Liverpool City, two teams that are playing well, to, to Craig's point, you look forward to these big games. Oh, yeah. When, when those big games come around yeah. and, and yeah. the crowd is like you expect yeah. at Anfield, you love those. It's, yeah. it's actually harder to go to a smaller yeah. stadium with a small crowd and less of an atmosphere. When you're playing well <coughs> and you're in a, a big team, a big club like Liverpool, Liverpool or City, you love these days. Uh, Mario, how conscious were you of a positive mentality yeah. going into yeah. these big games? Yeah, I, I don't know what the guy said. You know, when you come on the field, I always used to say to myself, this is what you wanted, you know, like when I was young. And I think sometimes when you're, when you're a young boy, you look at the stadium and you see those, I mean, like I had that, at that time at Ajax, 50,000 people, but it was not because it was 50,000 people in it. It was more because you, you, you know that it's a big game. Let's say, you, you know, any game you could call, it's a big game. But you don't, like, like Greg said something very good. You, if you think about mistakes, you, you're more likely to make one. Don't think about that. Just think about, hey, today is going to be my game. Whoever plays against me, you might be playing against one of the greatest players in that league, but just make sure that you think he's going to have a bad game, I'm going to have a good one. And you just perform. And just make sure you prep well. If you prep well, and don't think about it when the game kicks off. As soon as he blows the whistle, you should be ready to go. Tell you what, it doesn't help, though. <laughs> it doesn't help when you're walking up. You know, when we were playing in the Celtic Rangers games, particularly the ones at the ones at Ibrox, obviously we arrived in the bus. So you come off, you get a, you get a bunch of pelters, you get in the dressing rooms, into the into the stadium, you're done, right? At Celtic Park, uh, it's changed now, but you used to park in it was an old school, right? And that old school was, I'm going to say, a hundred to 150 yard walk to the main uh, entrance at Celtic Park. And of course, when you go in there for a huge game with a crowd of 60,000 plus, uh, they're all. There's already th a few thousand there when you park the car, and w walking up, you know, you think you talk about not <laughs> thinking about making mistakes. You'd walk up, you you have your bag and you whatever, and they'd be coming up to you. You better know, you better not get beat today. <laughs> I mean, you know, this would be a great, the Scottish are great. Your dad, your dad was at the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was before I got out of the car. <laughs> they're coming up to you going. You, better, you, you know how important this is? You better not get beat today or you're going to get it. And all that, you're like that. Wow. Oh, my God. But that's how so <sighs> they are. But that's how passionate they are. Of course. What was the World Cup like, Shane? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, well, I, obviously, my, my experience with boys was different, particularly for the first game. But to that point, the, the World Cup, in, in many respects, not that different from a lot of our, our World Cup qualifiers. We, you know, we'd go to, to the Central American countries and there'd be flares going off, the, the crowds are, are mad passionate. And then you've got Dwight, myself, Russell Latipi, who've had some experience playing outside. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and nobody else, and you know, all the others playing locally or, or in lower leagues ar around the world. And those were the games that, and, and I, 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 this Dwight, myself and, and Russell were very conscious of it. Those were the days that we had to walk taller. Sure. That we had to we had to show that we are we are loving everything about this, about about the flares going off and, and how crazy it, it can be. Because the minute we start to wither, everybody else around us is, is just gonna fold. But if we kind of, you know, shoulders, shoulders up and, and walk out tall and, and, and just be confident going out there, everybody's able to feed <coughs> off of that. And and um, in, in the and, and I always say this, which is why Dwight was such a good captain. World Cups are different, though, and not all the time, because some pieces yeah. are rivalry. But World Cups, are, World Cups are, are a lot of pressure, a lot yeah. of pressure. But generally, there's not a rivalry. Sure. Yeah. You know, sometimes there is, obviously, if it's a Brazil, Argentina, mm -hmm. or you know, a big, a big game like that. Uh, but generally, you're playing against a country from a different continent or whatever. It's just a. Pr Whereas when you're playing a, like a, a, you know, Newcastle, Sunderland, or sort of game like that, you have the pressure of the game, you have the pressure of the rivalry. Mm. So it's it's it's, it's kind of different, I suppose. But yeah. Everybody handles it yeah. in different ways, you know. It's just, mm -hmm. just you can either handle it, or you can't. Which team from your times come close to yeah. what Almeria has done this season? Almeria, of course, haven't won a game so far this campaign. No side in the history of La Liga have ever gone through the whole um, the whole year uh, without winning. Well, Derby County, Yeah, I wasn't there. You weren't there. It was three or four years after I'd left when uh, they got to the Premier League and I think they amassed, I might be wrong in saying they amassed 20 points. 
in the end. Right. And I went back to, uh, mm. at the time, we, I was working for Satanta Sports and, and uh, we were doing a, a, an FA Cup game uh, there at Pride Park and some guy tried to jump on the gantry and he blamed me for the wretched season. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> Which family <laughs> member was that? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Steve. <laughs> that was bad again. Why it's did they blame you? I don't know. It's, it's, it's almost like this was a... The guy just said to me this, he pointed at me and went, this is all your fault. And I thought, I think this was 2007 or something like that. And I hadn't <laughs> left here in 2003. Right. So I, I don't really know what I'd done in the four-year period. <laughs> Everywhere Craig goes, I just, someone I get blamed for something. I get blamed for everything, Shaq. Uh, I, I, I noticed, Craig, I was blaming you for the TVs today. <laughs> uh, Mario, Virgil van Dijk has always played a big role in <laughs> Liverpool. As a leader, how can he do to improve his national team, which has been struggling? I think I think what I especially what I saw yesterday, you know, his calmness and um, I felt he was very like, you know, like we've been watching him very closely and I think sometimes people will try to hit his confidence, but yesterday, wow, I really enjoyed it. Like the one-on-one -on -one situation with Haaland, mm. when he ran at him, he stayed calm. Then at the moment he wanted to strike, he pushed him a little bit. Just people will say like, yeah, but not really. Yeah, that's enough. It puts the player off. And if and, and a player like Haaland, that being that confident, he did not take him on like in a confident sense of saying like, I'm going to score the goal. So, and then he had some young boys around him and the way he handled that, like especially the two <coughs> ones on his right hand side, the two young boys, I, I think if he brings that to Holland and don't get affected about whatever, whatever anybody says to him because Virgil is a defender and sometimes in Holland, we want him to do more than defending. And I prefer just do your job first, the way you do it for Liverpool and then the rest, it can be built on that and I think that is going to be a good captain a captain that the way he is for Liverpool I want him to be exactly that for Holland don't drag this extra time out will you why I've got a game to watch tonight <laughs> for Saka I'm Chelsea, surprised that you're Chelsea here today <laughs> it's national napping day Oh, is it? Every day, well, every day is National Napping Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, which, which, which nation is this? <laughs> Mario, do you know the story that, that Shaka fell asleep during the World Cup final? No, I did not fall asleep during the World Cup final. <laughs> it was yeah. not the World Cup final. Hey, Shaka, come on, man. Come on, if I... Oh, my God. Mario, that, come on, Mario, that's not true. That, that is not come true. On, that's okay, not true. Look at the end of it. Yeah. Did you nap during <laughs> Chelsea Newcastle? <laughs> I, left that, I left that off. Just so we... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, promise, I promise, I promise, I won't. Uh, Craig, what do Spurs need to do in the transfer window to progress? Uh, well, obviously, the uh, addition, um, although he didn't play, the additional team, team of Werner was uh, an added bonus for the front line. Uh, at the end of the year, obviously, yeah. they brought in Dragerson. Uh, Van de Ven's picked up another injury. Yeah. Great. He looks really good. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah. Sarah and Basuma yeah. have been, been terrific. Goalie's been good. Yeah. Uh, Out and out centre forward. If someone gets uh, injured, what they're going to do? Maybe I say maybe another centre half. Okay. Because the yeah. importance he puts on the centre halves is a big strain. Romero and Van de Ven, because they're such an attacking yeah. team under Posta Coglu. Yes. He's almost sent to those two. Right? You deal with it or you don't. And they've done pretty well. So there's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on the centre-half. So he needs, he needs to make sure he doesn't have a scenario that he's had this season, which is at one point playing four full-backs across the back line. You could add that to maybe another striker. They've got a, they've got a good choice of front yeah. players. Yeah. yeah. And Richarlison had his moments. Yes. But, you know, whether they, I don't think Postacoglu mm -hmm. would believe that but maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't want a strike, and maybe he's going to say, well, I'm, "I'm going to rotate." I would think another defender, another striker. Final question to you, Mario: How influential yeah. has Jordan Henderson been since joining yeah. Ajax? I think they, you know, like I, I, why he came there is to bring his experience and to to help the younger boys. But what Holland now wants. You understand? And Ajax not because Ajax thought about it when they brought him. But Holland wants to see the Henderson for 10, year, 10 years ago. But that is, that, that I mean, like you're asking a player that is, you know, seasoned. He, no, he only needs to control the tempo. And they say, no, he needs to bring the ball forward and pass balls and dribble. So I think that the, the Ajax team is very, very, very unstable because they're very young. 
And I hope that the way he is, because mindset is very strong of him, I hope he can push them through and make them, uh, because he already, when he came, he steadied the ship because he's part of that journey. And I hope he can keep doing that because <laughs> then we can see start seeing eyes grow because at the moment, it's not looking really good there. Great stuff, Mario. Thank you very much. Uh, we will be back tomorrow, of course, to reflect on those two Champions Will the League TVs dive. be back tomorrow? Goodness, no. Can't day. wait to find out. It's all right. I'm not, into, I'm, I'm not in tomorrow. No. I'm tempted to come go in just to find out about the TVs. <laughs> just as, yeah. Just as, just as, hey, just to correct. To my door. Hey, by the way, you were very grumpy about it. Well, yeah, I was annoyed. Yeah, no, it's, it's unprofessional. No, but then I got over it because... I'm over it. It's a job. But it's a job. The one thing... But one ranting thing about it on here won't help, will it? Go on. Well, what do you want me to do? Just crawl under a stone and not mention it? <laughs> Somebody needs to get something done at this place. Yes, and I'm sure this will help. Uh, ESPN FC <laughs> is back on your screens tomorrow to reflect on those two Champions League ties. Arsenal taking on Porto, and it's Barca-Napoli.